right, so welcome everybody to this Birds of a Feather. Um, I'm Wilma Hodges. I'm moderating this session and I'm kind of uh, stalling a little bit for Julianne, who's going to be our facilitator. Um, we are planning to have more of a conversation. So it's, you know, at least it's something that um, you'll all be able to participate in. And hopefully Julianne will be able to join us and kind of pick up from wherever we are at the moment. Um, so as we as we discuss, um, feel free to unmute yourself if you would like to use your um, microphone to talk. Um, you can also type into the chat if there's something that you'd like to contribute. Um, or if you have questions as we go, feel free to either um, type into the chat or you can raise your hand and, um, and let us know. Um, this session is going to be recorded. I've already started the recorder, so it will be available after the fact to um, to watch. I'm just looking to see if maybe she joined yet. I have to scroll down to see. Nope, I don't see her in the list yet. Okay, so um, I didn't prep any slides for this because I wasn't expecting to present it, but um, we can go ahead and take a look at, um, at lessons and just kind of start brainstorming a bit. Um, let me go into, uh, I'll go into trunk, I guess, because that will be the latest version of lessons. And here, I'll share my screen while we're doing that. All right, so I'm just gonna log in as admin. And let's see if I can find just any old site. We'll go into um, Mercury site. All right, so I'm going to switch just for now back to light mode. All right, so this is lessons. Um, and if you've been in here um, in fairly recent versions of lessons, you may have noticed that there's um, some new layouts in here that you can choose. There's page layouts, which let you kind of, it's sort of a shortcut to um, doing a two column, three column layout and, um, and choosing, you know, border colors and things like that. Um, you can also choose from these page layouts where you've got like a sub page listing or an interior layout and it, it gets gives you a preview of what that looks like so it, it would give you a page that kind of looks like this to start from so that you're not starting from a blank slate because um like lessons is great in its flexibility but sometimes it can be a little bit daunting um, to folks that don't really know what they want on the page it's nice to have you know sort of a blank um area but with some some of this the sections of the page already kind of pre-formatted for you so that's what these page layouts do um, there are some other templates um, that are available in lessons within the rich text editor so um, there's templates here and these are the little sections of pre-formatted text that you can drop in for example like the insight conversation um, or um, if you have maybe a uh, alert with a star so it drops in this pre-formatted text for you and then you can replace it with your own um, so these templates were all contributed by university of dayton and they've also done quite a lot of the um, recent work on lessons for adding additional page templates and things like that. So we thought um, one thing that would be informative in this particular um, Birds of a Feather is to kind of hear from all of you on the types of templates that you would like to see um, if there are additional ones that maybe would be really useful to have either as a rich text template like these two little um, pieces of content that I dropped in or as something maybe in the page layout area where you can choose from more than just the three that are here. So that's just kind of setting the stage a little bit, um, but I'd really like to hear from all of you 
to see if you have any thoughts um, on on what you would like to see in terms of additions to the template area in lessons. So I'll just kind of open the floor. I'll join it. Um, have we considered um, the rich the rich text editor being the place to have templates um, for you know expanded templates for beauty like pulling in the same um <laughs> i was just reading john's uh comments but the, the the beauty that one would want in a in a rich text editor we get to use css we get to use other items there but i could see these being broken down by like a more of a library or sections of types of templates that we could build in there and i would love to get other people's feedback especially if we could add another template inside the rich text editor like there could be one for this and one for that just like we were doing with the lessons layouts yeah that's a great idea Dee. Dee. you mean like categories within here so maybe uh -huh. we could expand these out for different types of templates right. so maybe something that has an accordion that you can fill in maybe something that has just this short stuff that you would get i mean otherwise you'd have to go to either 30 or some other content creator like h5p and create an accordion well wouldn't it be great if we could just say this is an alert with a star oh and here's an accordion for content um, whereas these items that we're seeing here are normally like the headers wouldn't it be great if we could do something for the inside content that's my thoughts that's a great idea i was going to chime in too it'd be great if the admin users like on the admin workspace had a way of managing these templates so they could adjust the color so it matched the school's theme or adjust the icons be able to add ones you know specific to their institution without necessarily having to have developers and be able to go into the code be able to do it from the front end i like that yeah so having some sort of ui that admins could manage that would be really cool um where you could maybe tweak some of the ones that are there now like maybe you want one like this but with a different icon and you want to be able to kind of duplicate it and change the colors and change out the icon that sort of thing yeah change the color of the star change the color of the text bubbles right and have but it be default to be able to add, to be able to add different ones with again mm -hmm. without having to be a developer and being able to go into the code Right. Which lessons page, John, are you asking about in the chat? Lessons page you saw with the picture text tiles for modules. Uh, um, I think that might have been the Marist one with the one with the flashcard. Yeah, we had a flashcard, but no, I think it's yeah, or, is it, or is it Jennifer's? She yeah, had my picture Jennifer's. tiles too. She had nice ones too. Yeah, it would be great to have a lot of those available as something you could choose. Um, or maybe uh, not even here, but right now, let me, um, let me add something. I'll add a sub page just so I can. New page. Um, right now, you can choose like a button and you can choose colors, but it would be cool if you could choose like templates. <laughs> a, yeah. Well, a template for like an image button, you know, right. like maybe it gives you, you know, a place to upload an image or, or choose from a set of images that have been provided, um, you know, to have kind of that uh, view that's more like a card and less of just a, a simple button. That's pretty nice. More ways in general to be able to customize the look and feel of it without needing CSS. Because, you know, like, for example, I don't have the knowledge or the resources to do anything with CSS. So, you know, we end up with very plain in comparison. Yeah, I'm having trouble opening them. This is nightly. This is our QA server. So <laughs> I don't expect everything to work. Without needing to do CSS would be yeah. so much easier yeah i mean because yes you can go in here and go to the source and change some of this stuff but unless you know what you're doing um or unless you have the images that you want to swap out 
you know, at your fingertips, it's, you know, it's more trouble than it's worth a lot of times. So it would be nice, nice to have a bigger library of, yeah. of things you could pick. That library of options of templates or template headers or um, additional um, icons. What else do we have on that list now? Yeah. Yeah, Jennifer is saying that her tiles were done with CSS before the templates. So it was kind of pre templates and lessons. Oh, wow. um, but it'd be great to see if we could maybe convert some of your stuff into some new templates. Um, mm. Certainly be worth looking at. Yeah, I'm trying to keep up with the chat here. <laughs> well, we have such great icons showing up as we look at the um, the Trinity layouts and such. It would be mm -hmm. nice to have the the lessons that we create be just as clean and beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna change that because it's bothering me. There we go. <laughs> There's a note in the chat. Speaking of, Julian tried three different machines and has run into issues on all three. She has Zoom set up if we want to bop over and join her there. Uh, that would be hard to continue the recording though yeah. of the session. Um, I think we'll just stay here, right? Yeah, I hate to do that because I know she was prepared to join us, but I don't really want to stop the recording, start the recording, move everyone over. I think that might be too too many moving parts. So um, if she's able to join us, we'll, you know, have her give me a heads up if she is able to connect. But I think we're going to stay here for now. Thanks. Yeah, about other things it. in the chat that you might want to look at. There was. A... Yeah, let me back up. It's kind of hard to keep up with the chat here. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to read it to see. you. Yeah, that would be great, Dee Dee. OK. Um, so one of the things Christina was talking about is that she's been fighting to get the image padding in student pages for the scavenger hunt. Mm -hmm. um, so again, you know, padding, layout, HTML, CSS. Um, most of, many of us, I should say, do not have technical skills in that manner. I do not. Thank goodness John Corey does. And that's the only reason I've ever seen all the beautiful work. Um, but Jeremy says that there could be a drag and drop option to change the layouts inside the tool. Oh, that would be neat. Yeah, if you could make it um, a little bit like the dashboard where you can sort of move, move them around. widgets around, that would be cool. It's like too. fragments of code. Uh, mm -hmm. I think LifeRay does it that way. As far as website layout. Lots of people in the chat tip tidying. Yeah, I know one thing that was really popular um, was uh, the the sort of the headings with um, the the borders. Here, let me find an example. Hang on. Good. I'll Meanwhile, just... I'll let you know what Chris is saying in the chat. Chris Knapp brings up that uh, it might be useful to include examples of lessons pages with different types of LTI tools embedded into them. So that's a phenomenal idea, I think. So yeah. lessons pages with, you know, here's the link, fill in this section and your lessons connected. That would be brilliant. That would be cool. That would be very cool. Okay, so here, this is just some um, demo content I have on another server, but um, these, and if you were at the um, other BOF this morning, we talked a little bit about these banners with the image. It would be great to have that as one of the templates because I know that's something people like. They like to be able to have a picture behind, you know, a heading as sort of a focal point for the page. Um, and if we made it something where you could swap out the image and tweak the colors on it, because um, this is basically the same CSS that I used in this other class, um, I just changed out the image and you know made the colors a little bit different so um so that i think would be one i think that 
could be very useful to kind of jazz up a page really easily. That's, that's a great idea. That's a great idea, Willa. Um, hmm, that's interesting. Someone could present it. I don't think the audio would come through, Victor. Okay. Still trying to get someone can know. join the Zoom. Any other person sent the Zoom? Crazy thought. Yeah, I'm afraid to try Zoom plus big blue button plus screen share. But if anybody wants to try it, feel free. <laughs> Since I'm the one running the recording, I, I don't want to crash my system. <laughs> I, I've tried it before. The whichever one you join second can't connect to the audio. Uh, yeah, that's that's. I figured there would be a conflict of some sort. Because I've tried to, my monthly check-in with Derek is normally right about the same time as teaching and learning. Mm, okay. So I've tried to connect to both <laughs> and it does not like that. Yeah. Oh, um, Cindy is mentioning on the student pages that some of the, um, the page images aren't showing up. If any of you guys um, have scavenger hunt pages, um, let me just go in and look because I haven't looked recently. Pages of students, so we don't see quite so much navigation. Um, let's go down and take a look. Um, and Christina, you use fixtures, right? You said that you just had to make them public. Yeah, so it looks like I'm seeing some of your images now. Um, whoever created the page, they may have to make their images public for people to be able to see them. Um, so depending on where the image is coming from, if it's coming from a location that's already kind of open for anybody to view, then um, it shouldn't be a problem. But if they uploaded it, say, to resources, in Sakai, then they would need to make it a public resource for people to be able to see it. Um, okay, Angela, is this one that's having a problem? Let's take a look. Yeah, we're getting some broken images. There. Is she on the call, Angelia? I don't see her. I'll, I'll try to message her and let her know that she needs to make her um, her image is public for us to be able to see them. All right, so back to our um, our topic, <laughs> the templates. Um, Linda is mentioning that Roger Williams does this with departmental templates. They apply a course template for individual departments. Um, so it's basically, it goes beyond just lessons. It's, it's an actual site set up with, you know, some template items in there. And I think some institutions do this with, um, you know, uh, master courses where they have sort of a course that's developed by an instructional designer or by the department. And then that course is duplicated out for people teaching that particular section. And then the individual instructors can go in and tweak things, but the large part of the course design um, is already done for them so that they don't have to invest a lot of time in doing that. Yeah, a couple of people are saying that they have something similar with the master courses that are used as a, a template when you generate new sites. That's very common. I'm wondering if it would be helpful to you guys to have um, sort of a place where people could at least share maybe some screenshots of some of the master courses that they have. Um, if there are particular templates that you want to be able to look at and you know, kind of see what other people are doing as far as templates go. I know we saw a few um, this morning that were very pretty, um, but I'm sure that there's others out there that um, would be good to share. Okay. 
Oh, okay, Cindy is saying they have templates, but it's up to the instructor <laughs> to contact an instructional designer. Yeah, that that is sometimes the case where it's on, the onus is on the instructor to seek out help. I could share the, one of the templates for Antioch if people are interested in seeing what we have they're at the departmental level. And they're just full of instructions to the instructor. So they're pretty ugly until they update them, but we use them to inform as well as share the structure we'd like them to use. Would you like to screen share? Um, sure, yeah. Okay, who was that talking again? So I can uh, find you in the list. Eagles. Katie, 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 Katie. A lot of people in here. <laughs> okay, Katie, there you are. I just made you presenter. Okay, cool. All right, now I have to find out. Okay, share my screen. All right. You get to see how many tabs I have open right now. <laughs> okay. All right. Are you seeing my screen? Yes. Okay. Excellent. All right. So this is one for one of our psychology master's level departments. And so, like I said, it's not very beautiful here. We just have a bunch of filler text that is the instructions as well to people in here. So how to enter their Zoom meetings, whether they're using the LTI tool or putting it right here as a link, their name, instructions for replacing this with their own picture of themselves, all that. Um, and then we have the tools that we know people mostly use visible and the rest of them are hidden by default and they all have instructions for revealing them. And then like for instance, the weekly lessons, we have the 10 weeks for this program already built out. So they have a default page with the structure that we're recommending with all the elements on it. And then they can add and they can choose what they're using. And then the weeks pre after the first one are are the same structure, but blank so that they don't have to delete all the text every time and they just have the instructions in the first one. We also have, um, again, hidden and unpublished items for discussions, but so they can just go in and edit and they don't even have to set up the discussion each week if they have weekly discussions. We have a sample assignment that they can duplicate that gives them, that again, is full of instructions as part of the assignment itself and stuff like that. This is what we have set up and they're all customized and the links and the tools that they have are determined by the, in the specific program. Like they have some specific links to counseling and videos. That's really great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I'm sorry, I was busily typing because I thought we could maybe do a um, a list to kind of keep track oh. of people's yep, wishes. Sorry, I'm going, I switched back so I can see the questions now. Um, we, so there, those are imported automatically. So we have our courses all created automatically from our SIS data. So as soon as a course is made active in SIS and it's available for registration, then it immediately becomes, it goes into Sakai automatically. They have a site generated. They don't have to do anything to have a site generated. Um, and when that happens, the system just looks at the course code and then assigns whichever appropriate template we have designated to match that course code. So it's all part of the automated process that we have set up to create Sakai sites. So this is what the course looks like when the instructor goes into it every time without exception. And then they have to do all of the updating and modification, of course. And they we can help them with it if they ask us, but most of them just do it themselves. Did we lose audio? No, I was just muted. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I just put a link. I just put a link in there. Um, I made a, a quick Google Doc. It should be open for anybody to edit. But I thought it would be a place we could kind of document some of our um, wish list items. So, as you think of things, um, you know, maybe go ahead and type them 
there. Just we'll keep a running list. You can come back to this later as well. Um, and uh, also if you have any templates or um, things that you want to share as far as either like a master course template or um, you know templates within the rich text editor or even just CSS files. Um, we can kind of list them out here and that way we'll have a resource for folks to go back to later. And also as we look to um, create tickets for new improvements for you know things to add to lessons, um, we have kind of an itemized list of the types of templates that people would find useful. So um, I've, I've put that in there. Let me go ahead and take back presenter here and I'll share my screen. Okay, there we go. Um, so everybody feel free to, um, to type into there as you like and uh, document any wish list items that you might want. Um, oh, and I see in the chat, um, John was asking me if I could share the source code for that picture stripe text banner. Um, absolutely, I'll, I'll download that after um, the session. I'll, I'll pop it into this document um, so you can go back here later and find it. But that was actually some CSS code that I grabbed from some of the Dayton examples, and I, I tweaked it for my own purposes. <laughs> but uh, it's it's um, definitely something that I'm happy to share. So I'll, I'll put that in here under the shared links after the session. All right. Anybody else have thoughts? Anything anybody want to share? Dee Dee's asking if we can save the chat. Yes, I'll definitely save the chat. And actually a big blue button when it records, it records the chat as well. So I think I can grab that later also. Thanks, I think I got it, but I'm not quite sure, but I appreciate it. Everybody had such good ideas, I didn't want to lose it. Yeah, thank you. Let's see, when is our time up? How much time do we have? I'm usually more on top of things, but since I'm kind of pinch hitting <laughs> for Julianne who couldn't log in, um, let me see if I can get myself organized here. We've got about 10 minutes left, I think. 10 minutes. Okay. Thank you. So um, just one note about the CSS, and, and uh, Jennifer, you may have found this with some of your custom CSS. Um, sometimes when you're using um, CSS and the new dark mode in Sakai or dark theme, um, sometimes it can clash a little bit because CSS kind of um, doesn't always translate well to dark theme. Um, so it's definitely worthwhile to test it in both views. So if, uh, if you do have um, some custom CSS that you're using on a page, um, I would definitely recommend checking it out to make sure that it, it still looks decent um, when it's in dark mode. Like for example, let me see this, this site here, if I switch over to dark theme, I think it comes through okay, but there's others if you do a lot with CSS with like page colors, sometimes um, it doesn't always translate as well. So this one looks okay because my headings, these all came from, from the lessons page rich text editor template. So it was really just the banner up here that was a custom item. But, uh, but sometimes if you're doing anything within the page that's overriding any of these values here, you just got to check it out in dark mode to make sure it still looks the way you want it to. It's still legible and everything. So just a, a cautionary note <laughs> as far as that, because um, sometimes the custom CSS can clash with dark theme. Yeah, Jennifer is saying they do have issues with dark theme on some pages. Yeah. All 
Oh, Kurt is saying that his, they have a shared instance of Sakai. I'm guessing maybe you're with LAMP. Um, and it would nice, be nice to see the templates within the CK editor customized by each school. So that's an interesting thought because if it's something that uh, maybe you're using a, a shared instance or you have delegated access to give you certain permissions, it would be interesting to see um, a different set of templates uh, per institution. So that's definitely, if that's not already on the list, somebody please add that because that's a good one to keep track of. Yeah, Katie chimed in with a plus one on that. She would like to have different templates for different groups. That seems like it'd be a useful thing. All right, does anybody else have any other comments, thoughts, ideas? See Linda typing. Okay, Linda says that they have that with their custom course departmental templates. The School of Law has a link to the law library versus other templates that link to the university library. Yeah, um, a lot of times we can write rules to, you know, apply a certain template at course creation for courses with a specific prefix. So there's things that you can do like that as part of your, your integration with the SIS when you um, run those course copy jobs that, you know, clone a bunch of sites. Um, so that's definitely something that we do for some of our clients at long site. Um, so it's, it's certainly a possible thing. And you can also define uh, user groups within the system and different users get different, um, you know, things available to them in, in say, my workspace when they're in the home area when they first log in. They can have a different set of things available to them depe depending on their user type. Yeah, and some departments also share the custom templates um, with their adjuncts to give them some structure because adjuncts usually are hired in the 11th hour and they come in to teach a class and it's not their full-time gig and they're teaching five other classes at different institutions. So the more help we can give them, the better. Now, Kurt is saying he'd like to see an online repository or gallery. Yeah, I think that would be super helpful if we could get some sort of a showcase um, or you know, gallery like you, you mentioned where people can kind of browse for inspiration uh, because I think that's a really important thing uh, that we learn so much from each other um, that it would be great to have a place to collect all those resources. So um, maybe we can try to get something going along those lines in our Confluence Wiki um, maybe set aside an area for people to upload examples um, of course designs, course templates, that sort of thing. I think that'd be really useful. Oh, good. I got some people who like that comment. All right, I'll definitely make a note to create a confluent space for that. I'm going to write it down right now. Oops. Create. Confluence space for sharing example practices. All right, yeah, that's definitely doable.
Oh, thank you. Bonnie just shared a link to their site template. That's awesome. Thank you, Bonnie. Did you put that in the document as well? I see a lot of stuff here. If you haven't, please do. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Well, we have um, two minutes remaining. So um, if anybody else has any other thoughts, please feel free. Yeah, Kurt's saying, unfortunately, faculty don't always participate in these conferences because um, it is a chunk out of their day. So yeah, definitely having one of those just-in-time resources where people can go when they need it and not necessarily on a particular schedule um, would be really great. So we'll definitely build something up that's available for people when they, um, they can access it whenever they like. Yeah, yeah, classes, classes come first. <laughs> so um, unfortunately, there are your faculty weren't able to make it, but hopefully they can catch some of the recordings at least. And, um, and you were able to share a little bit on their behalf. So that's great, Christina. So um, we appreciate their interest, even if they weren't able to come live. All right, well, I am going to wrap up then uh, for to, for this session because um, we're just about out of time so um, thank you all for your patience and I'm sorry we couldn't hear from Julianne I'm sure she had some wonderful things to share with us and maybe we'll get her to come to another teaching and learning call or something and and uh, you know talk a little more about templates um, she actually did do a, a bit at a a teaching learning call a few weeks back that is um, that was recorded as well. So if you didn't catch that, um, I'll put that in the link here on this document so you can catch it later. It's uh, it, I think it's on the Perio YouTube, but um, I don't have the link handy, so I will paste it in there later on. So please check back on that document um, later today or tomorrow to find some additional resources when people have had a chance to um, to fill in that information. So our next item is, uh, we've got another round of lightning talks coming up at 2.20. So we'll have another exciting round. This is our third round of lightning talks for the day. And um, there's some great stuff in there. So hopefully you will join us for that in just about 10 minutes. And um, thank you once again for attending um, our, our Birds of a Feather on lessons and course templates. And more information to come, we'll definitely try to create a resource for people that you can go and grab some inspiration. So thanks everybody.